A warm welcome to all of you to this 50 minute session on transdisciplinary perspective for human security. This is the second session of, uh, of the Human Security for All conference organized by and with its partner, the Jena Declaration. The Jena Declaration is a project on the cultural approach to sustainability and human security for all. And was is together with the Club of Rome, the International Council of Philosophy and Human Science, and several national commissions for UNESCO and others, one of its funding partners. The outcomes of this session shall help to build bridges from scientific insight and knowledge to practical action, strengthening the basis for human security. Before I leave the floor to the panelists, uh, please let me introduce myself very briefly. I'm the founder and holder of the UNESCO chair on Global Understanding for Sustainability at the Friedrich Schiller University of Jena, the initiator of the Jena Declaration, a vast fellow and the moderator of this session. We leave much time for this session for discussion, first among the panelists. These panelists are Moto Contani from Japan, Maria Paradiso from Italy, Thomas Reuter from Melbourne University, currently living in Germany, and Piero Domenici from Italy as well. After the panel answer, after that, the panel will answer the questions submitted by chat by the viewers through the chat. But now, very first, a brief self-introduction of by the speakers. Ladies first, Motoko, please. Okay, so I'm Motoko Tani. I'm very pleased to uh, join this panel as a panelist. And so I'm executive vice president for research at Tokyo University in Japan. And as a researcher, I'm the mathematician. I have been uh, involved in the promotion of science and technology in many aspects of, of course, a research a researcher, but also research management. Before Tokyo University, I was the executive director of for international relationship for RICAN, uh, which is uh, one of the biggest national research and development institute. And also uh, I'm the uh, member of board of governor at Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. And also I have been involved in the national um, policy for science and technology innovation. Or uh, for example, I'm the executive member of Country for Science Technology Innovation, which is under cabinet office. And its mission is to make a basic plan for SDI for every five years. And I'm also involved in the uh, Science Council of Japan and Mass Society of Japan and International Council of uh, Science. And I'm the Vice President for Science and Tech Society and Chair of the Committee of Science Planning and also Working Group for Science Education. Probably this is the reason why I'm invited as a uh, panelist. So thank you very much. So Maria, you will be the next, you are the next. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you very much, Ben, for this invitation. I'm really thrilled to, um, to discuss in this panel. And regarding me, I am a geographer, so a kind of holistic disciplines. And one of my best experiences in my scientific work was to be a founding member of a new university. So it was a kind of natural locus to have interdisciplinary uh, dialogue with other disciplines, but also trying to have some impact on society. So trying to establish links with uh, citizens, NGOs, and the policymakers. And it was also a depressed area of Italy, so something that was a little bit also more difficult. Uh, currently, I'm vice president, vice president of International Geographical Union, our scientific uh, organization. And uh, I've been always interested uh, in uh, trying to establish bridges with, with, with social science, sciences, geographies especially, and uh, technological disciplines like uh, engineers. Uh, but I will tell you about uh, later on. And I have an experience in uh, cross-disciplinary dialogue in Academia Europea, HRA section there. And, uh, but I think that's, t t t okay. I also serve an international science council, but this is enough, that's enough, just for titles. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ben. Okay, thank you, Maria. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, maybe next, and then Piero. Okay, I'm Professor Thomas Reuter. As Ben said, I'm at the University of Melbourne, currently living in Germany, however. Uh, my research is on the sustainability, especially food systems. And I'm an anthropologist, so I work with local people. Diversity is my bread and butter, so to speak. 
I've had various roles. I've also been on the executive of the ISC, um, the co-founder of the World Anthropology Union and former chair. Uh, I've uh, served on Future Earth Asia's board, and I'm currently on the board and executive of the World Academy and a member of two European academies. That's enough for now. Okay. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Piero? Thank you, Benno. It's, it's for me a, a very, very great pleasure to debate with you uh, this fundamental topic because I think that uh, transdisciplinary approach uh, is uh, a fundamental topic and not only for scientific researchers and not only for experts. It's, uh, it's a question, is a topic that regards uh, uh, democracy, that regards uh, our possibilities to inhabit the complexity, because in my opinion, it's not possible to manage the complexity. Uh, so I am a sociologist uh, and a, a philosopher with a, a methodological background. So uh, I have uh, every possible uh, fault uh, according to the paradigm of uh, the hyper-ecological civilization that is based on the idea that uh, uh, to achieve uh, uh, efficiency and production. Well, what about my research experience? I will refer only to some of the uh, recent ones. Huh? My this transdisciplinary research and training experience uh, uh, covered different levels of uh, planning uh, and action. And uh, I'm part of uh, GRC expert group. Is a, a group uh, set up by the European Commission, uh, which deals uh, precisely uh, with involved in uh, an international horizon project on the topic of uh, um, countering and uh, fighting corruption, and the importance of education to counter it in the long, long period. And uh, um, another project whose name is uh, uh, Cozy Thinking uh, European Project uh, is uh, a project uh, founded by the uh, European Commission Erasmus Plus, which has among its various objectives to educate and train uh, the same scientific researcher uh, from all disciplinary fields in complexity and transdisciplinarity. At the national level, uh, I can speak with you about a national project whose name is uh, PRIN, P R I N on transdisciplinarity to build a learning city. And uh, um, within the, uh, the University of Perugia, I teach at the University of Perugia, uh, I uh, have worked hard to uh, set up a multi-inter-transdisciplinarity group, uh, research group on complexity. Today, this group is made up of uh, uh, about uh, 60 professors and researchers from all uh, uh, disciplinary scientific fields who organize uh, systematically and, system and systemically uh, lectures and seminars about uh, these topics. Thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Piero. Uh, now we can enter into the debate. Uh, just to, you just illustrated your very broad and uh, back, uh, backgrounds and uh, the big uh, wide horizons we can discuss this thing. Uh, very often, um, transdisciplinarity is uh, understood just as something similar like interdisciplinarity, but of course, uh, just to make that clear from the beginning for all the viewers that we are not discussing interdisciplinarity, but transdisciplinary, meaning that we are discussing questions outside of the scientific approach, practical problems, and the question is then how can different scientific background contribute to, to the solution and to the inside of this, um, let's say, everyday problem constellations. So my first questions to the panelists, the first question to the panelists is, what are your experience with transdisciplinarity in your research? And in what context did you make these uh, experiences? Maybe in the same uh, uh, line as we, uh, you presented yourself, maybe starting with Motoko. Uh, so first of all, as a researcher, I'm, I'm involved in interdisciplinary research. Uh, first, I would like to mention about that. Uh, so I was the center director of the big institute uh, with 200 people 
but all their material sciences. So uh, in the digital age, material design is quite different. So although I'm a mathematician, I, I read the, this institute uh, as a mathematician, but uh, uh, reading uh, material science. That is interdisciplinary, not transdisciplinarity. But uh, uh, as I said, I'm uh, involved in the science and technology promotion in different angles. And uh, as an executive vice president for uh, research at Tokyo University, we have just established the um, Sustainability Open Knowledge Action Platform. Uh, Tokyo University is located as a, uh, very close to the epicenter of a uh, uh, very good uh, big earthquake in 2011. And uh, 10 years after, we decided uh, to have some kind of contribution for the, this uh, symbol to make uh, research, the high quality research and education to really change the world for sustainability. And uh, this has a small component, research, a training of young people, because uh, to change the world, training is most important. And uh, uh, connect or a project, uh, it's not uh, only within the academia, but uh, collaborating with uh, industry and the uh, civil people and the government. So that is a project and connect and also outreach. This is the our platform, which I have established. And also when I'm involved in the science, um, the science council and technology uh, in the cabinet office, uh, as I said, the mission of this uh, council is to make a national policy for five years. And the, in the fifth uh, the plan, we uh, propose the notion of uh, a society 5.0 is to use science and technology for human well-being. And uh, we realize it's not uh, enough just uh, the uh, natural science engineering, but the social science is very important. But the in national uh, basic uh, uh, act uh, of science and technology did not involve the science, social science and uh, the humanity at that time. So we changed the, the uh, science action act uh, after uh, in the first time in 25 years. So it's really make a conversion knowledge to really make us uh, the society for well-being. So this is uh, what I've explained in this uh, transdisciplinary research in the technology. Yeah. Yeah, your latest experiences inside the, the the International Science Council. If I'm well, uh, we can maybe come back after afterwards about your experience in that project, specific project of the International Science Council. Okay, Maria, it's uh, your turn. Yes, thanks, Ben. No, I would like to refer to two experience experiences, especially one was at the, the end of the at the late nineties. And it was in a national center, in Center of Excellence on Software Technologies, which was also aimed to start up digital innovation activities in some parts of Italy. And it was a kind of dialogue first with other competencies, of course. Um, and then it was an experience to try to develop some paths some new competencies and dialogue in the territories to start up new activities and to promote territorial innovation. It was in different parts of Italy. And then the result was the creation of several spin-off and also the attraction of big enterprises. Now, currently I'm based in Naples, Federico II, which is a recent some academies between our university and some big, software companies and also some new innovative activities linked to the uh, information space. And, um, and this was one of my first important experience in transdisciplinarity because of course, probably I had also a previous one because it was the first national pilot um, project in Italy. Uh, aimed at uh, developing ties and networks between universities, um, policy making, especially ministers and uh, enterprises um, before the Italian constitution bring, bridging to um, a more regionalized form of state. 
currently, and I would like to mention this project because I think it's interesting too, um, we are developing um, a national center on marine biodiversity. And this is an interesting experience because it, the sea is important for our country. And uh, of course, as we know, oceans are important for fighting um, the disastrous effect of climate change and also to work for future more territorial justice among people and among several less favored uh, territorial uh, countries um, in regard to the problem of um, access to resources in the marine environment. This is another interesting uh, transdisciplinary um, exercise because one of the projects be beyond the more scientific uh, important tasks of the project is to, to, to work um, on schemes of the citizen science and the citizens' involvement, and it is precisely in line uh, with the Yena Declaration, Ben, uh, and your beautiful project and approach with the Yena Declaration, how to empower, not only empower the action of citizens, but also their awareness, their competencies, um, yeah, precisely with the specific regard to everyday life sustainability. I mean, and this is, uh, I can mention other projects, but I think, so um, these are the two uh, main projects that, that uh, I would like to focus probably in the following steps of our discussion. Oh, thank you, Maria. Piero, I give you two or three minutes. We have to discuss later on other, other points. Yes. Yeah, so what, what uh, dear, dear Ben, with the, um, as, as I told you, uh, uh, totally agree with the, with the, with the colleague. Uh, as I told you, transdisciplinarity is a, is a fundamental uh, issue. And I try to share with you some, some ideas, some critical point uh, with the reference to the project uh, I have mentioned. And I would like to, to point out uh, with you and share uh, some elements and, uh, and critical issue uh, about uh, the, the project. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking, we are talking about uh, 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 in my opinion, our urgent need uh, for a systemic vision, a systemic vision uh, and uh, a renewed dialogue and uh, contamination between knowledge and skills, uh, between the humanities and the sciences, between technology and culture, rationality and creativity, form and substance, and above all, between the human and the technological. And uh, we need to heal the artificial fracture uh, separating this concept into what I call false dichotomies. Uh, in particular, in uh, recent years, uh, uh, this division has been fortified by the insistence on what uh, has been termed the STEM disciplines, uh, um, namely science, technology, as you know, engineering, mathematics. Of course, they, these are fundamental fields of study. I would like to be clear. But even the most fervent supporters of the STEAM doctrine are now coming to realize that one-sided figures who have been educated only in these areas cannot bring about the kind of change which are necessary for humanity today. The point uh, I'm making is that the same critical stance uh, I have taken on so-called digital education and the whole issue that uh, for this hyper-technological civilization, only digital skills are needed. I have the impression that this is the great mistake of the, and the great illusion of the hyper-technological uh, paradigm eh, and civilization. Uh, they are, of course, uh, important, but uh, we uh, need awareness about uh, the, the, the topic that uh, technology is a part of culture, not something external to it. So, uh, at the same time, the data cannot tell us about the qualitative factors. It cannot interpret our vision of interconnectedness. So the qualitative factors are what motivate us to go beyond the rationale of always looking for something useful in what we do or study. So beyond the algorithms, segments of data and numbers, mole molecules, synapses, hormones, and chemical reaction. So the great mistake, in my opinion, is uh, several uh, points and elements of the project. Uh, 
Uh, the great mistake is uh, Manupino, the car blanche we have delegated to technique and technology, reintroducing reductionist and deterministic approaches, which have pervaded all the aspects of society, including our schools, with the idea that educational processes are a question of a purely technical nature, solely a problem of skills and know how, and nothing more. Whereas, it is the why and not only the how the students should be taught to ask themselves. So we have to go, and I'm finished, uh, to go beyond uh, reductionist and deterministic interpretation also during this pandemic, engaging uh, in dialogical reasoning that inevitably brings uh, our apparently irreconcilable and incurable Dakotas and polarities and falling back on linear and causal models. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Piero. This is a wonderful intro, uh, starting point for Thomas. <laughs> okay, now maybe yeah. uh, focusing a little bit on the intercultural aspect and, and cultural diversity. Indeed. Yes, well, ahead, you know, trans, transdisciplinarity, to be honest, for some disciplines is quite hard because they're highly specialized. That is not the case with my discipline. As an anthropologist, I look at other societies and I see them as knowledge structures. That means as integrated cultural systems whereby we anthropologists understand culture as the sum total of all learned behavior from tying your shoelaces to running a stock market, okay, everything. So if you take such a systems perspective, it, it forces you to work in a transdisciplinary way. In, in anthropology, we often use historical, political science or economic theories and methods. Uh, and we also critique them. Uh, we also, I've also had to, uh, to read my way sometimes into rather distant uh, uh, fields of science, uh, distant from social science. I've had to read uh, environmental science, biochemistry, even nanotechnology for various reasons. For example, I work on food, so I need to understand nano uh, uh, substances in nanoparticles in, in food. But our own core method is, of course, to study social systems as a whole through immersion and comparatively in their full global diversity, not just in the West. And uh, as Benno already mentioned earlier, very briefly, transdisciplinarity is also called for whenever anyone does any engaged uh, research to produce change in the world, which I've often done uh, most recently in trying to co-design sustainable food systems with other stakeholders. Now, real life issues are always complex and do not care about disciplinary boundaries and skill sets. And applied research is as always transdisciplinary by necessity. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. Um, now, maybe we should we have we should discuss transdisciplinarity in respect of how to prepare grounds for human security for all and and to improve human security for all. So, what do you see as the main obstacle for such a job? I mean, if you want to integrate the citizen's view and take everyday problems in the perspective of the everyday world serious in the scientific approach, then we need, I think, to open up the scientific uh, approach and giving the chance to integrate people's view and teach people's, uh, um, uh, yeah, to the everyday world, uh, to, to put it roughly. So, what do you see as the main obstacle or what should we focus on if you want to go down this uh, road, integrating everyday world for the benefit of all people to improve all people's security? Maybe Motoko, what is your experience in your uh, project of uh, the International Science Council as far as I understood? It's going in general exactly that same direction, how to integrate different knowledge uh, parts in education to have a, a wider uh, understanding of, of everybody's uh, everyday worlds. So thank you very much. Uh, probably as uh, you may know, the uh, International Science Council has its mission and vision. First of all, the, uh, its mission, uh, its vision is advanced uh, science and technology uh, for public goods. 
and uh, its uh, mission is to become a global voice for science. And so we try to uh, gather the collective knowledge uh, really to make all this knowledge for the, um, the public goods. To do so, we really need a transdisciplinary approach. It's not uh, the enough for only one single scientific uh, discipline and also a single nation. So uh, the IC would like to become a platform for these uh, all discipline and uh, all the uh, uh, regional uh, varieties. But the, it hasn't, uh, it has never set uh, the education as its uh, project. But uh, uh, responding okay. to the uh, global request from our members, we finally decided to um, step in the education. And so the, actually the working group has not yet started. So I cannot I tell the, the result, but uh, we did a lot of uh, discussion uh, what this working group is targeting for, because as you know, the education is a uh, uh, really a good film and uh, all the nation, uh, all the science discipline is really discussing about the education of young people. So what we can do uh, differently from all these uh, different activities and our strength point is uh, we have uh, all these uh, two, more than 200 member from all uh, region and from all science. And the, uh, so we, we think the, what we should target is the education, not education, formal education in school, but the training of scientists to promote the comprehensive science literacy. And it's uh, including the, the uh, value of science and philosophy and ethics and the uh, communication and uh, the uh, communication with society, state, policy, and transdisciplinary and disciplinary skill formation. Uh, within each science union, they have uh, skill training uh, in their own discipline, but how you can develop uh, more transdisciplinary uh, training for young scientists, uh, probably this is what we can do best uh, in ISC. And I think uh, the, the, the objective uh, of transdisciplinarity is uh, first of all, different culture, different vocabulary, different uh, uh, culture and the training. Uh, so how we can really make a communication uh, over all these uh, disciplines and also sectors. And I mean, this, it's not only academic, but the industry, government, citizen, it's all this uh, important. And uh, during the COVID time, uh, the expectation of science and technology is growing, but also at the same time, we may lose the trust from uh, our society in science. So this is a really a critical time for us to recover the trust and to train young scientists really to, uh, address the global agenda. So this is because this is a reason why transdisciplinary training is very important. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Motoko. Who else wants to uh, put the floor? <coughs> ben um, may I? Yes, go ahead, Maria. Okay, thank you. I would like to elaborate on what Motoko uh, said before, and also adding something precisely coming coming from stemming from, for instance, from my um, current personal research and uh, practices. I fully agree with Motoko that for approaching your main questions, how open up scientific approach to society, probably we should also intervene. I mean wisely and uh, also profoundly uh, about the education among different scientific sectors. And for instance, as social scientists and a, a geographer, but as a social scientist, I still believe that we need some education for hard sciences colleagues. For instance, for letting them become more aware 
about the results of their research in terms of spatial justice, in terms of development, north, global north or global south, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would like to point out to a simple example. I'm, I'm working on this. Uh, first of all, we, we discuss about science, but science uh, is public, but there is also a lot of private science. So, and there is one best example, which is very important uh, about the access uh, to resources for humankind. Thomas, for instance, in his speech, referred to the fact that he needs to understand about nanotechnologies. Uh, my issue is, uh, what happened if, for instance, uh, uh, digital um, DNA, DNA sequencing is produced in a private laboratory, for instance, linked to biotic elements or to uh, biotic resources, which are very important for human food, uh, nutrition, or other practices? Because... Uh, we need uh, to, I think, to discuss very clearly about the political landscape of, of, of science and the links between science and external worlds, also in terms of costs, benefit sharing, investment on competencies and investment by public science and what is really the result for public science. Um, the example I would like to point out just uh, to, to have um, a, a very fast link between uh, your uh, question on open, opening up scientific approach and uh, society. <clears throat> um, I, I think that the must of scientific work and must of business work, uh, it is practically neglected uh, the, the informal knowledge, the tacit knowledge, for example, by local society and marginal groups, marginalized society, what is uh, normally called indigenous knowledge, for example. If uh, we go back to, the, to my example of digital sequences, and there are some groups, also International Science Council, dealing, dealing with this, if, um, for instance, the, 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 uh, the data ownership is crucial. The data ownership, for instance, for private companies can affect severely issues of spatial justice and access to resources to more marginalized groups. Because normally about data ownership, we refer to some um, protocols and some models but these models, for instance, are questions by some from by some indigenous groups or some more marginalized societies. So education for human security, in my view, is also uh, to let um, um, many groups of scientists, especially non-social scientists, aware about the impact of their be behavior in laboratory, the impact of their kind of research and uh, about uh, the economic exploitation of results and the economic landscape of, of, of science. Because this, of course, can marginalize more some groups or can have a better care of spatial justice and human needs. So human securities, for instance, uh, in my view, should be... Um, work more within science along this along this kind of awareness education or about economic exploitation of um, scientific systems and imagine what kind of innovation should be done in terms of open science which is something which, which is something more um, inclined to human security and for um, involving citizen science and the citizens needs I can I can use other um, other brands, but I don't want to use them. I can only mention, for instance, the colonizing science, but it can mean everything or, or many or many things. But we need uh, to be clear about, for instance, also the and this is a, a, a work done by International Science Council. We need uh, to be more aware of uh, <clears throat> the private market of data of publication of publishers. And the kind of investment which is uh, happening between university investing on competencies and money and uh, the journals, for, for, for instance, ownership of data, uh, protocols, examples. 
probably I too much. <laughs> I would like to would like to encourage the viewers to submit their questions through the chat before I give uh, ask Thomas how his, what his experience is in the inclusion of Tasi knowledge. I mean, if you include civil society, then the inclusion of Tasi knowledge is one of the important points, I guess. So, mm. can you maybe a little elaborate? You have a, a wide experience, sure. a long term experience on that. Sure, Thomas? sure. Yeah, in the course of my work, I've. I've have to develop a number of methodologies that aim to involve civil society and, and social science. That means actively including the people who uh, researchers used to once see as mere objects of their studies. To begin with, my work is nearly always engaged, and that means I need to be in line with what local people want, their priorities, because otherwise they will have very little enthusiasm to participate. And secondly, their participation in the research or development context means that local people are partners. They want, too want to have the research question answered because it matters to them. They too want to find information because they co-own the project. And uh, what we discover when we, we take uh, this approach is that our interlocutors in the field have a great deal of both practical or tacit and theoretical knowledge as well especially the indigenous people who are custodians of uh, the fruits of deep evolutionary learning. We have much to, to, to learn from them. When it, uh, and when it comes to development, their cooperation and engagement is indispensable. Ideally, I think all social science, all research should be co-designed and also co-delivered with stakeholders in civil society. And I think this kind of inclusiveness would also be very helpful in business and government projects. If, you know, for example, in business, uh, if you take in the consumer's perspective, really take it in and uh, design products that are not just profitable, but also really ultimately useful and, and uh, practical for, for the consumers. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. There is a question from uh, before I come to to Piero. There is a question from uh, Stephen Hartman from the Bridges Coalition UNESCO Most Program. What social and managerial innovations can or should our institutions undertake to better prepare and support transdisciplinary knowledge co-production in our complex organized knowledge system? Exactly the the following question, uh, ongoing questions of uh, Thomas' intervention. So I, I think that uh, um, in this moment, we, we are realizing uh, that uh, our organization, our social system, and our lives uh, should be taught, uh, reimagined, and managed as living organisms that are complex systems, uh, and not as mechanisms that are complicated systems. Complicated systems, as you know, uh, are artificial and mechanical system. They are governed and characterized by linear interaction, cause and effect. They are manageable. They are observable, uh, in, observable in every dimensions. And you know that uh, as uh, uh, hard sciences told us that uh, complex systems are characterized for emergent properties that are not observable. Uh, so, the, this is a, a, a big problem, a big, very big problem, because uh, uh, I think that we are also in a, a, an age of radical obsolescence of uh, knowledge and skills. And I think that uh, the risk to uh, is the total delegation to the technology. Technology is an opportunity for us, but if okay. we uh, don't try to change radically education, training, and research that are uh, characterized from uh, a monodisciplinary approach, from uh, false dichotomies, logic of separation. I have to share with you an example. In Italy and in, in other countries, uh, at the level of public discourse, uh, multi interest transdisciplinary approach are uh, uh, the, the talk of the town, uh, but the, the in, in reality, they are uh, really obstaculated behind the, uh, especially uh, behind the, into the educational and training institution. For example, when I publish a scientific article 
or I realize uh, an international project that is not uh, uh, correlated to my scientific sector, uh, for my academic career, these are not evaluable. So at the level of public discourse, these are goals that we obtained, but in reality, they are obstaculated. So mm. we need to overcome the boundaries we have created, which are blinding us to the true nature of our world. Um, I think that, uh, for example, the specialization, specialization and multi-inter-transdisciplinary approach is a false dichotomy. Knowledge and skills are specialized. The problem is to create the conditions that are social and cultural, but especially that are epistemological and methodological condition to create the dialogue and the contamination between, between the scientific sectors. And uh, you can think that uh, uh, from our universities, um, we prepare the teacher for schools. And if our university are uh, uh, constructed, built on logical separation, on monodisciplinary approach, we produce teach teachers that are not prepared to the uh, contamination between the knowledge and, and skills. Mm. And so, yeah. okay. I think okay. that- So uh, I, I would like to ask uh, Maria and uh, Motoko, and then later on Thomas, what specific measures you would take in the educational system to, to enable trans, uh, preparation for transdisciplinary work? If you would be the director of the world for all <laughs> educational systems, what would you do? <laughs> Benno, uh, if, okay, if I may, I am the first, so my work is a little bit less than the other people. I'm, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> no, I think a, um, a clear measure, simple, should be in every PhD education, have some basic, um, some basic slots for social understanding, for territorial understanding and about uh, current system science, so, sorry, current si science systems and what should be, you know, worked for having future scientific systems better for, the, for people and for society. So first measure for PhD and the future scientific leaders. This okay. is one measure, but of course okay. I can discuss more. Yeah, Motoko maybe, and then uh, Thomas. Yeah, so I would like to give two examples. Uh, so first one is uh, some program for a PhD student. Um, so it's the uh, sponsored by company. And company uh, gives a program. Uh, it's a three three month program. And company give a program, which is rather big, and the student come from all uh, all disciplines and try to solve the problem as a team. It's a team is very small, and uh, discuss and uh, for three months and uh, in between the the from industry the company send a moderator or facilitator to really discuss together. And uh, through this program, they learn how to solve the social problem by using their own discipline, but uh, the combined with other discipline. This is a really uh, a successful program. The other uh, uh, example I have is this, I already told about this uh, open platform for sustainability. And uh, the, we would like to make a really completely different training system for PhD student. And so our idea is not uh, we do we make a curriculum by professor, but uh, we encourage them to make a program their own. So we give uh, some month for them to invite people from uh, different sectors. It's not from academia, but the industry and the government, and they listen and uh, they would they just uh, formulate what they would like to 
uh, learn from all different disciplines and to make a curriculum by their own. So it's a kind of additional program. So they have their own discipline and uh, their own curriculum, but uh, additional, they do make their own curriculum program. That is okay. a way they really think uh, what they want to learn. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Mm. Thomas, uh, Thomas? Okay, just to kind of come a little bit back to the theme of the conference, which is human security. And the key idea really that is that security is a systems property. It's not some isolated facet of life, some military concern or so. And this system is emergent, like Piero said, dynamic, ever-changing. It's So working towards human security is like taking a flying shot at a moving target. What it takes to be secure today is not what it will take tomorrow. And therefore, security means being nimble, adaptive, resilient, inventive, and imaginative. That's what we need to teach. But unfortunately, we don't train children and used to be highly imaginative and thus so able to envisage and, and create necessary procedures for voluntary system changes. System will change by itself if we don't. And hence, they do not learn how to escape from the trap of what is an unsustainable way of life, a dying culture. Fortunately, some individuals have a powerful imagination without education, but these people lack support because uh, uh, mass support, because uh, there, there aren't the educational methods to encourage imagination. I think uh, to do that, uh, education should be more project uh, related involving teamwork on co and collaborative problem solving, a systemic perspective using elements from the toolkits of multiple disciplines. And of course, that would mean removing uh, much of the competitive elements of education, that bad habit of pitting students against one another. That is socially toxic. It incentivizes self-seeking, uncooperative behavior. It's not how humans have survived for the last 250,000 years. Our strength as a species is communication, collaboration, solidarity. And yet we beat that natural cooperative out, cooperative earnest out of our children, just as we beat imagination out of them, forcing them to learn you know, a dead canon of knowledge rather than how to draw on existing knowledge to achieve something new and unforeseen. So in a nutshell, educators should learn to ask students questions for which there is no known answer yet, and thus treat them as co-investigators. It's the same basic principle as in cutting-edge uh, participatory approaches to research. The motto should be we, not us and them, because together we are strong. And, you know, that it means acknowledging diversity in individuals and in societies as a source of strength. Because collaboration only makes sense because we are different. We have different things to offer. And if whenever there's domination, you silence all those different voices, you make yourself stupid by having dominating authorita authoritarian uh, systems of, of, of governance or education make people stupid artificially. That's a real shame. So yeah. we, we need a much more open system. Uh, and one that's based on this ecological principle that diversity is strength. So yeah, I think this. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Thomas. I, I try to summarize in a few sentences. I think you all three did it already, and 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 uh, Piero laid the ground for for this uh, final statements in his statement before. I think what I got from this session is uh, we had yesterday uh, we told. Uh, Use that sentence for the application of um, of technology in um, human security of all. His point was we have to move from a me to we, and I think in a disciplinary sense it's exactly the same. We have to move from me or our discipline to or my discipline to our knowledge and our knowledge using. The whole stock, all stocks of knowledge for future uh, uh, challenges and for improvement of human security means also the inclusion of TASI knowledge and the, the experiences of everyday uh, 
people in their context, what they are seeing as potential solutions and to work together. And that, of course, is calling for openness and solidarity in all respects between among scientists, scientists and uh, citizens of the planet and so on. I'm asking all your panelists a last duty to summarize the, the insights, your insights and your contributions to this session for, for the organizers that are asking for that. The key insight of the session that you are making, it doesn't have to be very long, but your key statements you make to sending me the, I will compile them and give it to the to the organizer and you'll be met, uh, put at this position or the wider public on, on the website. I have to close here. I'm sorry, I would like to talk uh, much longer with you. Uh, I think it was, we had a very good start and we need to continue this conversation by other occasions. Thank you very much for your participations. Thank you very much to the viewers for the interest. And yeah, 